Hello folks, it's Tiso. The wait for Yomiya is over. Lots of people were saying she's weak before her release, but is she really? Yeah, she is actually kinda underwhelming for a 5 star. Wait, 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 before you close this video, Yomiya does have redeeming qualities. She seems weak when compared to her other pyro counterparts, but as a main DPS, she's okay. Not overpowered, but alright. She is super energetic and have a very cheerful voice and attitude. I also like her visual design a lot, but that's a personal taste. Her kit does lack AoE damage, which is one of her biggest weaknesses, but most of these bosses are single targets anyway. And even while lacking AoE damage, she can still clear any content in the game. Yoimiya also has a large variety of team comps that works with her. In this video, I will go over her abilities, unique nuances and quirks, then her gear and team comps. Some of the math and charts used in this video was obtained from the Yoimiya mains discord. If you want to skip the basics, then go to this time for the important sections when using her in combat. Yoimiya's main source of damage is her normal attacks. She has a 5 hit combo that actually shoots 7 arrows. The first and fourth attack animation both shoots 2 arrows each. Her attack animation is also very smooth, and a bonus of being a bow user is almost no hit lag while attacking. The most iconic part of her kit is her elemental skill, which increases her normal attack damage and imbues it with pyro for 10 seconds. You can do her 5 hit combo 3 times, plus the first hit of a 4th combo during this buff as long as you don't need to dash away from getting hit. If you are playing on a phone with low frame rate, then you still might not be able to get all the hits out. Also, here's the ironic thing. This elemental skill is the most important part of her kit, but it should be the last ability you level since the damage difference between level 1 and 6 is just 12%, while her other abilities scale much better. Since she is a bow user, her normal attacks would just hit one target, so she lacks AoE. This can be partially solved by using an overload team with Venti, but it requires a Venti. She is also the second character to have a level 2 charge attack. The level 2 shoots 3 additional homing fireworks that doesn't actually do much damage. You also lose these charge attacks when her elemental skill is active, so you end up almost never using this ability. That's good news for a lot of players since aiming is kinda of wonky in Genshin and it reduces your vision from the zoom in. Like I mentioned a minute ago, her elemental skill is the keystone of Yoomiya's kit. It imbues her normal attacks for 10 seconds, and she can complete her 5 hit combo 3 times during this buff. The cooldown is 18 seconds, so you only have around 50% uptime. However, you can swap to your supports and use their abilities while waiting for the skill to come off cooldown. She will also lose this buff when swapping out, so try not to waste this buff duration unless you really have to swap her out to save her from dying. Her elemental burst has a short animation with iframes. The AoE size isn't that big, and this puts a debuff on one enemy. It lasts for 10 seconds and it can jump to a new enemy when the original one dies. This debuff is meant for your other party members. Whenever someone else hits an enemy with this debuff, they will take an extra hit of pyro damage. This extra hit does the same damage as the initial hit from the burst and can only trigger once every 2 seconds. The proc does do AoE damage, but they don't have that much scaling, so don't focus too much on optimizing this ability. There are two ways to use this ability. The obvious one is to have your only a burst, then swap out to your supports to do damage. The other way is to use a support with an off-field damaging ability like Beidou or Xing Cho's burst, or Fischl's Oz, then swap back to Yomiya and burst right away. The hits from your support's abilities can proc the debuff even when they are not on the field. Now for the more advanced combat section. First, I want to talk about her internal cooldowns. The go-to reaction with Pyro is Vaporize, so let's see how many of her attacks can react. I am using level 1 weapons to not kill the enemies too quick. On the left, she is only doing Pyro damage to see the baseline damage numbers, and the right is with Xing Cho support. When we slow down the footage, we can see her attacks vape every 3 arrows, or every other hit from her combo. Remember, her first and fourth attacks shoot twice, so we basically vape her first, 
third and fifth attacks. When she starts her next attack string, the first hit babes again, so we end up repeating. I also tested this with the overload reaction, and it shows the same results. Overload procs three times per combo on her first, third, and fifth attacks. Both reactions seem to have the same internal cooldown. Now let's ramp it up with both Overload, Vaporize, and Electro Charge at the same time. We will need to slow down the footage even more since there are so many numbers appearing on screen. We see Yomiya's first attack not vaporizing, but her third and fifth attack does vape, as well as the start of her second combo. So besides the first hit, the extra damage from the vaporize is all there. But in addition, we can see the overloads and electro charge on Yoomiya's first and third hit, which is independent of the vaporize reaction. This means you can dish out higher instances of damage by combining different reactions. This is also called a fireworks team, which utilizes overload, vaporize, and electro charge damage. Keen eyed viewers might notice the electro charge and overload hits are not appearing consistently, and that can be caused by three reasons. Number one, the Fatui puts up an ice shield. Number two, the reactions are still happening, but the game can only display so many numbers, which actually happens in Genshin. And number three, the electro or hydro element did not apply in time and was used up by other reactions. Since you are applying so many element applications, certain reactions will be harder to control. But don't overthink it and just treat it as free damage at the end of the day since overload and electro charge reactions don't do that much damage anyways. There are some nuances to Yomiya too. Sadly, her normal attack won't always connect to the target. If an enemy dies and your new target is right behind them, your arrows might disappear from the old enemy or miss the new target entirely. You also cannot choose your target too well, so sniping down Sison mages while avoiding their summons can be a challenge. Then there's the large slimes. Whenever they leap in the air, she will continue shooting them even though they are too high to take damage. Now let's end with a non-combat trick. You can use her charge shot's homing feature to snipe down a flying bird for a quick achievement. You can find some on the clifftops here in Liyue. As a side note, her kindling arrows home onto cats as well, but good thing they have such quick reflexes. At least we have a reason to use our charge attack now, since you won't really use it in the middle of a heated battle. Her ascension material is Nakuweed, which are found in Inazuma. Here are the locations marked on my map. There are 59 Nakuweed locations in the game as of version 2.0. If you want more details on their specific locations, then check out my guide for farming routes. Her talent priority is normal attacks first by a large margin, then her burst and skill. As I mentioned earlier, her elemental skill barely increases her damage since the scaling goes up only of about 3% per level. Here is a matrix of her damage output based on her normal attack and elemental skill talent levels. From this chart, you can see that having her normal attack at level 7 and her elemental skill at level 2 is better than going 6-6 in both talents. For Yoomiya, you definitely want to focus on increasing her normal attacks first. Her ascension 2 passive is pretty nice. As you keep hitting enemies while infused with her E, you will do more damage. This gives more incentive to try to use her full 10 second duration whenever possible. Her ascension 4 is nice after her E expires. This incentivizes you to swap off Yomiya to use your supports and have them use their abilities while waiting for the cooldown to return. Just make sure to use her burst within 3 seconds after her E is gone. If you are using the 4-piece Shimanawa's Reminiscence, then you will not fully benefit from this passive. I will talk more about that in the artifact section. Lastly, she has a new passive talent that refunds materials from the teapot furnishings. It's not that great, but I can see it reducing the grind for the crazy decorators out there. Now for her weapons. Since Mihoyo is continuing to make new weapons for each 5 star character, her best weapon is obviously the new Thundering Pulse. Then comes Amos Bow and then Skyward Harp. We don't talk about the eulogy since that's a support focused weapon. 
For 4 star weapons, Rust is her best option. At Refinement 5, Rust is about the same power level as the Thunder and Pulse. The new Inazuma Bow is also a good choice if you can keep her burst filled and not use it. Her burst isn't that strong, so holding full energy is a viable choice, but this playstyle has horrible synergy with the 4P Shimanawa set. Let me just cross the Prototype Crescent off the list since you will not be using charge attacks in the middle of combat. The Viridison Hunt is okay on her. It does add a little AoE damage and it can help a tiny bit with the overload reactions, but it does have a crit rate substat. Since she naturally gets crit rate as she ascends, you can end up with a pretty unbalanced crit ratio. However, since the Black Cliff Bow is crit damage, it does work pretty well with her. And surprisingly, the 3 star Slingshot is a very good weapon on her as well as long as you are close enough to your opponent. For the TLDR, use a Fire Star weapon or Rust if you have them. If you are free to play and didn't get lucky with the gacha, then craft the Inazuma Bow, buy the Black Cliff, or use a Slingshot. Now for her artifacts. There are 4 viable sets for her. The 4-piece Shimanawa, 4-piece Lava Walker, 4-piece Bolide, and 2-piece Crimson Witch with an 18% attack hybrid. I will talk about the pros and cons of each set. First, let's go over the new Shimanawa's resonance that everyone thought would be her best set. It kinda is. This set does provide the highest damage normal attacks, but it does have some caveats. Because of the energy drain, you will almost never have her burst ready after the 10 second expires from her elemental skill. This means during downtime, you'll be swapping to your supports without leaving her fireworks debuff on an enemy, and also not being able to buff your team with her ascension 4 passive. This set also forces you to not use the Inazuma Bow, since you cannot take advantage of that double passive. For her Lava Walker set, it is used in mono pyro teams. The most common team for this set will be Yoemiya, Shangling, Bennett, and one enamel character with the 4 piece Venera set. You can run Geo units for the resonance as well. This set will let you freely use your E and Q each rotation, but the downside is fighting pyro slimes and shields which are immune to the majority of your damage. The 4 piece Bolide is pretty self explanatory. More damage while protected by a shield. You also have the same freedom when using her elemental skills and burst. This does require you to have 1 or 2 Geo units to maintain that shield uptime. Lastly, the 2 piece Crimson Witch with either 2 piece Gladiator or 2 piece Shimanawas. This is my favorite set since it gives you the most flexibility in choosing strong artifacts. It also does not restrain your team comp or rotation. All of the team comps except the Mono Pyro team that I'll be showcasing next will be utilizing this hybrid set. One of the major defining factors in picking which one of these sets will be the artifacts that you actually have available on your account. The 2-piece and 4-piece bonuses are nice, but focus more on the artifacts with a lot of priority stats first. Her main and substat priority is the same as 99% of the other main DPS characters. Attack Percentage Sands, Pyro Damage Goblet, and Crit Helmet. You want crit damage for her helmet since she has natural crit rate. The substats are pretty common as well. Crit stats are the most important, then attack percent. Energy recharge is nice to have if you are running 4-piece Shimanawas to ensure the 4-piece usage. For the other sets, don't worry too much about her energy since the burst isn't that important. Elemental Mastery is also good if you are not using the 4-piece Lava Walker since Yoemiya will be triggering most of the reactions on your team. Now for the last thing to cover, her team comps. I will be showcasing some team comps in the Spiral Abyss. These characters are not whaled out, they have reasonable artifacts and talents that most AR55 accounts will have access to. First off is a normal Pyro Vaporize team with Xingqiu. Here is a comparison with a generic Vaporize team. I'll be showing both Yomiya and Xiangling main DPS. This is to help compare her with other Pyro units. I am also adding in a child team here for extra comparisons. I treat this team as two sets of duos that tag out when their elemental skill are on cooldown. Yomiya will pair with Xingqiu and child pairs with Xiangling. Note that this team does not have a healer and your DPS archers can be quite squishy.
When we compare Yoomiya directly with another pyro unit in the Vaporize team, she's not gonna look that great. So let's use this chance to try out some new team varieties. A strong overload team will be Yoomiya, Beidou, Fisho, and Bennett. Beidou helps a lot with the AoE damage. Try to get both Beidou and Fisho's abilities to snapshot from Bennett's burst. The extra attack buff will help a lot. This team is fairly easy to play since you have a healer when in trouble as well as very strong single target damage. Just make sure to position Oz in a good spot since you cannot reposition him while Yomiya has her skill activated. If you happen to have Venti, then you can replace one of the Electro units with him to gather enemies and help out even more in the AoE department. Beidou will be a little better here if you are able to keep filling up her burst. Here is a mono pyro team in action. Since this floor does not have any pyro immune enemies, a mono pyro team can work. You will need to have a 4 piece lava walker set to take full advantage of this team. For me, my lava walker set is not as strong as the hybrid sets that I was using earlier, but it still works out. Speaking of teams, this is pretty flexible. Your 3 supports should be 2 pyro units and a flex. Shangling is a great choice especially at constellation 6. Bennett is another strong choice on any team since he can heal and supply a lot of energy particles. The flex bot can be an Anemo unit with the 4 piece Venera debuff or a Geo unit. From the chamber 1 clear with all these teams, most of them have very similar kill times. This is actually good news. This means you can play Yoomiya with any team you enjoy and still get decent results. And that's pretty much it for my guide on Yoomiya. She is a fun character with a very nice visual design. While she cannot compete with some of the other 5 star DPS, Yoomiya can still handle all the content in the game. And isn't that what really matters? having fun and enjoying all the bits and pieces that Genshin has to offer. And I will end this video with that message. Thanks for watching, and as always, have fun out there, traveler.